All right. Hey guys, Steve here, or Spike. So, decided to go for a walk today, finally. I was gonna go yesterday, but ran out of daylight. So, I have a few topics for you, for you guys today. I'm gonna slow down and catch my breath, because I just hiked up a big trail. So that was kind of fun. Anyways, so, First topic today, I got a little list. I have a lot of topics actually. I tried to narrow them down to just a few. All right. So, start with S233. S Bill S233. I talked about it a little bit last time. The universal basic income. Basically, uh, we're getting into this social credit system. Social credit system, basic, basically, from what it seems like, is we're going to get an app on our phone. And what this app does is it allows us to dictate our social status. So basically, we'll have a, a list of places we are allowed to go to. Um, for example... If you don't, you know, pay your taxes and get your regular doctor visits or whatever, you won't be allowed to go to the bar or restaurants, things like that. Like, the government will dictate uh, where, you, where you can go and what you can spend your money on. Uh, this includes, you know, Freeland and her excessive power on trying to make sure that these emergency powers stick so that she can monitor and dictate where and where we cannot spend our money. So she can monitor our bank accounts to make sure we're not doing anything bad. Which comes to another thing that I just saw today. I noticed that uh, there was five police incidences in Ottawa uh, regarding, regarding the uh, police convoy, or the Freedom Convoy and the police, that... Uh, those incidents were not part of the convoy, uh, including the arson. The, it was just an Ottawa man, and it just happened to be the exact same time that these people, these Freedom Convoy, showed up in Ottawa, and then this arson. I believe it was a hotel or something. Somebody lit up something. Lit something on fire in the lobby or something like that? I don't remember. It's been a while since I read up on that document, but I knew it was false. It was just some sort of thing that happened. And it was a random coincidence, you know? This happened the exact same time this happened. That's all it was. And uh, I didn't really get into full detail about all the uh, other information, but uh, it sounded like one of them was uh, how you, how the money was not funded from terrorists. Um, another one was, the money actually came from within Canada. Most of the money came from inside Canada. A lot of the big donations were Canadian funds of people who, you know, are fed up with the government and their their overreach, you know. Their overpower and their, their mandates and their shutting businesses down and whatnot. Anyways, going back to this universal basic income and this social status that you've got to maintain uh, a community I don't know you have to volunteer in the community you have to uh, do so and so actions inside the community you have to act so and so favor ah here's a good example um, to get a good social status you have to promote vaccines so let's say you convince five people to get a vaccine and each referral gains you, I don't know, let's just throw a number at it, say $500 each person. So you get rewarded for convincing people to get vaccinated. And that might be like a little extreme like explanation on this, like how the social credit system works, but... <laughs> You kind of get the gist of like 
that if you do this, you, basically if you obey, we'll give you a government check. Which kind of goes to the other topic, and if you want to get down to it, is uh, the the credit system, the credit score system. So the government allows banks to give you money for good behavior. So you pay your bills, you pay your bills, you pay your taxes, and you're allowed hundred thousand dollars to buy a truck. Cool, but the banks get to determine whether you can pay your bills based on your credit score system or the credit score that's ridiculous it's like behavior uh, control like like I have a check you know every month for so and so amount of money I can pay this bill but you're telling me I'm not allowed to have this loan but I can prove to you that I can pay it. That's how uh, screwed up that system is. But you know, we're all in favor for this because it's it's just the normal. It's just a normal thing. Pardon the sniffles. It's a little chilly, but I'm not cold. But it is a little chilly. So this social credit system, that's that's basically what that means. You be a good boy, and the government will give you money. That's what that means. So, what we're worried about, or what some of us are worried about, is the government's going to be like, well, we're going to go to a new wave of pandemic, and we're going to require everybody to get vaccinated. And if you don't get vaccinated, we'll withhold your check. So you've got this, this, this force people to get vaccinated to, to live, to get a check, to, to f buy food for their children. You've got them sneaking in the mandate inside the labor code, which gives employers the right to terminate people based on their vaccination status which goes against the, uh, the Canadian Health Act which dictates if you didn't know it allows you to withhold your medical information other than your doctor meaning your doctor should be the only person that knows your vaccination status Whew. That was, a, that was a, a bit of a hill. Oh, I can't really show you. There's no way to flip the camera while I'm recording. So that's that. So if that happens, uh, people on disability um, who have grant, been granted permanency, like they will not lose their access to their disability check unless like like extreme circumstances that that uh, you're not uh, following the rules of dis disability the BWD file or whatever you know province you're in if you're not following their specific rules like if you have you know $200,000 or $300,000 you get kicked off disability obviously you don't need that much money Things like that. Well, I mean, people want that much money, but the rules state that you can't have that much money. And if you do, you have to live off that money until you run out of that money. <laughs> oh, wow. Just all these little tiny rules and these, like, you have to do this to do that, and you have to do this to do that. And that's another thing is if you've got, say, $10,000, $20,000 saved up and you want to apply for disability. But in order to do that, you have to go into income assistance, apply for income assistance, which basically says you have to live off of whatever money you have in your savings account. 
until you run out. And then you can go on income assistance and they'll, say, they'll cut you a check, right? But if you want to apply to disability, you have to go through this process. But it's like, no, no, no. You, you, you're not applying for income assistance. You're just applying for disability. And you're not looking for the, the paycheck from disability. You're looking for the disability benefits, right? The dental, you know, the minor things that you can get through disability that most people can't get through income assistance and things like that. The extra little bit of help that the disability package gives you. So you've got to like go around these little tiny loops and hoops and legal terms and crap and most people just don't know understand all that. And explaining it can be difficult too. Especially for somebody like me who who uh, struggles to, to to pronounce and and bring the thoughts to, to, to my tongue in a coherent manner that people can understand. Because I, I don't know, just not good with speeches and good with talking to people. Don't get me wrong, when I get into a conversation with somebody that I find they can hold a conversation with me and can, you know, be patient and can hear me and understand me, and everything's all good. And that's awesome that you guys can see and hear my thoughts too, because sometimes I have troubles getting it out there. So that's that's the social credit system. That's Bill S233. Uh, I believe there's another one, but I'm not going to quote it because I might get it wrong. But it's very similar to S233. Um, it's a little bit muddy out still. Good thing I'm not mountain biking yet. So, going on that subject with uh, Bill S233, I never really mentioned, maybe we'll mention a few more times. If none of you are all familiar, but there's a, there's a little town called La Crete, Alberta. And I've been kind of watching, following along. It's kind of interesting because these, these people in this town who live, I don't know, 12, 12, 12, uh, 12 hour drive away from the next city. They're basically quarantined, tucked away in some sort of corner of Alberta. And uh, they never followed the lockdowns and the mandates. And I, think, I believe I heard that their vaccinate, vaccination rate was around 30%. And they didn't close down the churches, they didn't close down the bars, they didn't close down anything. And they've got about 3,000, 4,000 people in this little town. And they did a independent testing, blood testing. They had to send it out of province because, because of, uh, would have been flagged by the government, blah, blah, blah. But you guys should look it up. It's real interesting how they, they managed to curb a lot of COVID, COVID in, in a sense, in their own, in their own way, in a way that should have been done across Canada, in my opinion. Because now I've been researching and looking up other countries like uh, Bangladesh. Now, if you want an inter inter interesting conversation, look up Bangladesh. That is one interesting way that they did their their COVID response, their 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 way they handle everything, which is what Canada should have done. But of course, we're under strict quarantine and war rules and lockdowns based on whatever the WE Forum and who has given us a direction. So we have to follow these basic rules. So we can't go and, whoo, that's slippery. We can't go and follow our own rules and make our own scientific judgments because we're under a a World Health Organization. Okay, so basically, we should have done our own scientific research and listened to our own scientists. Like Dr. Uh, I think it's Dr. Malone. I just watched a really good video about him. <clears throat> Pardon me. 
Um, he is the one of the scientists that, sorry, virologists that created the mRNA vaccine. Okay, so he went on and talked about the uh, the, the vaccine and its efficacy and things like that. I'm just gonna look at this map here for a second. I've never actually been on this trail. So I think we know that way. I encourage you to look up um, Joe Rogan and look up Dr. Malone. Uh, it's a three hour video, so it's a good, maybe uh, put it on while you're traveling in your car or something. And give it a good listen, but it's got some really good information about the early on situation when it came to the first steps and the second steps and the health protocols when it comes to going into the hospital and having COVID. <laughs> There's a lot of information there, but uh, basically to try and sum it up, it sounded like Dr. Malone was kicked off Twitter for basically saying that these are documents that other countries are doing. These are tried and true methods. This might've been a bad idea, go this way. I might slip and fall. We'll just try and be careful. Um, these are the tried and true methods. Um, the human version of in Invermectin, which was deemed on news sites to be bad for you. Bad, bad for you. It's only for horses, but it's not true. That is false information, and the news should have been taken down for that. That was a World Health Organization protocol or something like that that has implemented that Canada, the United States, Australia, uh, UK, and several other countries have to follow. Okay, so that being said, other third world countries like Bangladesh and other ones have used these uh, safe and tried and true methods scientifically proven to have worked and uh including the Herman Beckman and a few other uh another one that I can't remember the name of and I'm not going to pronounce it and get it wrong because of course somebody will twist it and say oh this is what it was but it's actually not true but uh it's in that video with Joe Rogan you want to look it up that information is available and made public so yes, I am validating my sources and checking to make sure that that the information I've looked at is, you know, verified by several other people. And so basically, he's talked about this tried and true method. He put out this documents. He said, you know, this is this is what we should be doing. And uh, the government said nope. He was banned off Twitter. He was banned off somewhere else. Uh, LinkedIn, I think it was. Um, and he was basically told, he was basically stripped of his uh, scientific and his doctor, he basically told that, you know, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And uh, several company or several websites that did fact checking for Twitter and whatever uh, had deemed him false and Basically, when that happens, you are deemed not a doctor in the government's eyes, even though you practically have more knowledge than most of the politicians put together. <laughs> what? Oh, and then, yeah, and then as soon as you talk to your family about this topic, too, and it's like, oh, that's false information. <laughs> so, it's a true story. Hello. Uh, so when you talk to your family about the situation, they all think you're crazy, and they all think it's false information, and you're deemed the crazy conspiracy theorist of your family, right? Wow. Wow. That's quite a statement. Because that creates a whole new separation and division in your family. Uh, you lose friendships. And you've divided Canadians. Thank you, Prime Minister.
for that lovely, lovely situation you've put us in. And then everybody keeps blaming uh, truckers for being racist and misogynists, whatever else. When the Canadian truckers have united us, they have united us all. So when came February 14th, I believe it was, and the truckers came, they were already in Ottawa. I finally got my two weeks off. I, I was like, I gotta go. I got two weeks off, I told my boss, I'm like, I either gotta quit, or I just, I just gotta go. I gotta go to Ottawa and uh, stand for my freedom, for my rights. And I left and I spent, uh, I think six days in Ottawa, or well, I spent four days in Ottawa and two days in Gatineau, Quebec, because obviously we got kicked out of the hill. So I uh, packed up my car and got out because I heard that they were going to sell our vehicles and not give them back. And I didn't want to have my vehicle stuck in impound because I need to get home to get back to work, take care of my kids, etc. So that, that was a huge, crazy, crazy, but awesome experience going across Canada, sleeping in your car, and then like sleeping in a hotel every few nights so you could get a you know good clean shower. Sleeping in Manitoba and minus 40 weather. I've posted a bunch of pictures on on my Facebook, if you guys want to check them out. Awesome experience. Got to see a couple solar solar farms for the first time, windmill farms, etc. Stopped at Niagara Falls, but it was actually kind of foggy, so I didn't get to see much of it. I got to see like a 20, maybe 30% of it. It was pretty cool. It was nice and, nice and colorful. Uh, Got to drive on a, quite a few cool highways that you only hear about on like Highway Through Hell, the Highway 401. Things crazy, especially when it's snowing. That was fun. <laughs> Time to get my hair fixed soon. Hopefully my auntie can do that soon. So, what was I talking about? Cause I was talking about, oh yeah, La Crete, Alberta. Um, let's talk about other countries and how they successfully curbed COVID and they did a really good job. So that's awesome. And, uh, wondering why our government really fell through the cracks and didn't, didn't really. So yeah, that's another thing. Then that video that I was just talking about, the uh, Dr. Malone, he said that there was incentives for doctors to put people in the hospital. Like incentives. Like if you deem yourself a COVID patient and you're put on the ventilator, that the hospital actually got money for you. Which doesn't make any sense. I don't know if that's true. I would really like to know if that's true, if there is. And it needs to be, you know, investigated. And uh, people need to answer for that. That, like, when you're given a vaccine, you should be fully informed of everything, everything, before you take that vaccine. And the fact that the documents were locked up and a judge had to bring them out of lockdown says a lot. Like, those documents should have been given to every single person that got vaccinated before they got vaccinated. Not you know, you know, 18 months later and a, a, a riot squad and lockdowns across the country. You should be informed of every side effect and, and, and experimentation going on when it comes to an experimental uh, vaccine like this research people validate so the, the this comes to my next point and I'm gonna bring up um, information psychosis 
information psychosis. There, there's no, there's no definition to look up on Wikipedia or anything like that. You have to put the two words together. Psychosis, a reality like so crazy and outside of your, your, your paradigm and information, <laughs> which the media feeds you. So the media feed you information, creating a psychosis. The media has created an information psychosis around 20 million Canadians, maybe more. Because when at first everybody was under, you know, and only maybe what, two to 5% of Canadians knew the truth. I'm not saying I did, but I was questioning things, saying this isn't right. Something's something doesn't add up. <clears throat> it's like a nice walk. So that also that also comes down to um, a media blackout, which is pretty much the same thing. It's basically the government is feeding us propaganda. They want us to only know what they want us to know so they'll program they'll pro they'll slow they slowly program us over time and you can actually look it up the the Canadian Armed Forces put out a uh, document back in January or, or December of last year stating that they were aware of the government's uh, propaganda agenda that they were trying to program Canadians. Um, that's why the, the, the Canadian Armed Forces stepped so far back. They want nothing to do with what's going on in Ottawa. They don't want nothing to do with, you know, Calgary, Victoria. They don't want anything to do with that. They don't want anything to do with blockades. Uh, Coots, Alberta. They don't want anything to do with that. They want to step way back and watch it from back there. Because they actually want to join us. And that's why James Top is traveling across Canada. And last I heard, he was in Cranbrook as of today. Taking a bunch of pictures with his fans, and I got my picture taken. I went down to see him in Rock Creek before he left, because I was a lot of gas to find him. And sometimes, when you got a bunch of little back roads, and he went and backtracked up to Princeton, he screwed me over. <laughs> Whatever. I found him, gave him a Gatorade, fucking gave him a big hug, sent him on his way, because. He's doing the same thing I did. Tra traveled about 8,500 kilometers to stand for my freedom. Media blackout, people. Oh, it's a deer. A couple of them. I don't want to get too close because they can be uh, there's actually two of them there's another one just over there somewhere I heard a crack there he goes I'll just slowly slowly make my way up Make a bunch of noise. And I'll be off. Hey, buddy. See you later. <sighs> oh, there he goes. Ooh, he got a big tail. Big white tail. She's a doe. She's a doe. I don't see any antlers. 
cool, cool. So I raced into town yesterday because I heard the uh, one of the convoys was here. But I actually missed it. But it turns out they're joining us on Saturday, which is pretty cool. So I'll get to see um, another big convoy joining the other convoy that I actually... I recorded it, posted a video on YouTube. You can check it out. I'm going to get ahead and record it as well. Um, I'll, I'll join in the convoy, but like right at the last second, like right after Penticton, I will de put myself at the head of the crew and uh, take a good video with the, with the camera. I'll get it all set up. And get a get a really nice nice shot of the the convoy passing the car the car pardon me so we talked about the information blackout the information psychosis the media blackout the uh, legacy media has blinded us all uh, oh yeah we touched base on the Victoria thing so Victoria has now put out a, a notice, was it uh, from Jim Horgan. Jim Horgan basically is locked down Victoria. He says, huh, nobody in and out of the, the Bay Area. So they, they've locked it all down. And they've got security checkpoints. So they've probably got a bunch of people out there. Um, making sure that uh, you're from that area. So if you're not from inside Victoria, you are not allowed inside Victoria, which pretty much is unlawful considering section six of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedom. Section six, section six, well, section six states that you are allowed to freely travel anywhere inside Canada. Um, why can't I travel inside uh, Victoria? and peacefully protest. I don't understand. Oh, and the horns, uh, $75 for a horn ticket and uh, 125 if you don't pay it right away. What kind of what kind of crap is that? Like I understand uh, if, if it's excessive honking or stuff like that, but uh, wow. $75. Like, what if you're honking at your, the guy in front of you because he's not going in a red light or something? Like, turn around and get a $75 ticket. That's... <sighs> this world is coming crazy. It's going crazy, man. It's going crazy. What are we doing? We need to stand up to this. I'm not saying we need to make louder noises because obviously that didn't work. You know? We went out to say hi to Justin Trudeau to ask him to come sit down at the table and talk to us, listen to what we have to say. And we had a couple spokespeople and they arrested him and held him as political prisoners. Now they want to put out Bill 36 that says that uh, um, if you stand up against the government they're allowed to, to arrest you and charge you just for speaking out against the government. I mean, just I, I could turn around and be like, Justin Trudeau doesn't stand for me. He doesn't speak for me. And I'll get charged for it because Bill, what, Bill C-36, I think it is, says that they can do that. It's not right. Oh yeah, that. Oh yeah, going back to that that conspiracy thing, you got Br uh, Russell Brand too, eh? He's now he's deemed a conspiracy theorist. But the thing is, is when the legacy media went on and defamed him on TV or whatever on on the website, I, I don't know. I, I only read it. It basically said that he's a conspiracy theorist, he spit you know, spitting out false information. But I've never, I've listened to Russell Brown. I've, I've subscribed to him. I've, I've heard a bunch of his videos. And I've never heard, a, heard him specifically say something that could be 
false information. If he says something, he usually is like, what do you guys think? Put it in the comments below and we'll discuss it. And I'll read your comments and we'll see. Maybe there's some merit. I'll discuss it on, on my YouTube channel. Discuss it. He's not saying it's true. He's not saying that this is accurate information. He's not, you know, and, and usually when he does stuff, he's usually got some documents to go with it saying, this is what this person said. This is what this person said. This is what this person said. And he's got valid links and verified information put out specifically stating that these facts are true. These facts he's not sure about. What do you guys think? Put it in the links, you know, in the comments below. Like that's Russell Brand. That's that's his. That's the way he does things. He's not a conspiracy theorist. He is a independent journalist. And I actually found that at first I don't like how he does things with his hands and he talks with his hands, whatever. But when you listen to him without, you know, watching his hands. He actually has some legitimate ideas and conversations that we should all be having with our family members. Including the ones that go straight to gaslighting and deem you called a conspiracy theorist. Because now I'm calling out my family, you know, my people that I talk to and be like, all right, well, if you think my information is false, then I would like proof that your information is accurate. Such a nice day out today. Very beautiful. Nice view of Cal Lake. By the way, yeah, I'm at Cousins Bay in Vernon, BC. I'm uh, walking on one of the, the hills um, near Rattlesnake Point. Uh, there's mountain bike trails over there that I love to go mountain biking on. Maybe I'll take you guys with me one day and post it on YouTube because there's not very many videos of that. But I need a GoPro for sure because I don't feel comfortable enough to on my phone. My thousand dollar phone smashed on a rock going around a corner doing somersaults down 36 double D. I think that's what the trail call. It's so I've almost got through this list. Uh, I think I think I got everything actually. Yeah. One last thing. I'm gonna end with. <clears throat> it's weird, but um, talking about the Ukrainians. We've got this war going on, and they're saying that Putin is bad. Putin is bad. Vladimir Putin is bad. He's bad news. Yes. Do you even see what's going on in our own country? Our prime minister is just as bad. Um, he's driven up inflation, or as Pierre has put it, just inflation. <laughs> he's, he's destroying our economy. He's driving costs of food. He's driving cost of gas up. He's he's done so much to our to our economy. He's divided Canadians right down the center. We are all split in, in half. He's driving this great reset, and he's basically saying we take up too much space. And he's driving his own political agenda without even listening to his Canadian citizens. I mean, we put him in power to listen to us. And he's not listening to us. So, you know, I, I really feel for these Ukrainians. And I really feel sorry for them. And I feel bad that this is happening. But there's also other wars going on in other countries. Uh, I was just looking that there's stuff going on in like four or five other countries. And, you know, nobody ever talks about like Somalia and, and other countries like that. Where they're living in so much poverty 
and you've got little kids running around with AK-47s. But nobody talks about that. And nobody talks about the neo-Nazis. The 22,000 neo-Nazis in Ukraine. Nobody talks about that. And nobody talks about how the Canadians went to go train those neo-Nazi groups in Ukraine. Nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about the uh, biolab research facilities in Ukraine that are funded by NATO and the U.S. That the Senate of the USA has confirmed, so you can go look that up if you're you're curious if you think that's misinformation that is not that is true story oh wow there's another deer so uh i'll leave you with that so if you think anything i said is information misinformation go validate it like this is this is 2022 and we're listening to other people tell us how we should act and and how we should listen to the news and obey the news and listen to the government and obey the government and just go get jabbed, go get the vaccine. Like that, that's such a fascist statement right there. Just, just listen to the government. Like why did all of a sudden Canadians turn to fascism over this past two years? They've been programmed and trained by the government to be fascist. And I keep telling people, like, I feel like I'm being watched or something. I keep telling people I feel like I'm fighting zombies. But you can't shoot these zombies because there's a cure to fix these zombies. So you're going around and you're, like, throwing these words at these zombies, but they can't hear you. They just bounce off you. And then they just go when they turn to gaslighting, you know. They fight you. So we're fighting zombies that can be cured. But the only cure is just keep standing for our freedom. Maybe eventually they'll figure it out. Eventually they'll they'll be like... You know, they've been protesting for like six months now. I wonder what they're talking about. Because I haven't seen any violence lately. They just keep standing there with signs like they've always been doing since since January 29th. I wonder really what they're going on. Because... Nobody's arresting these people. They must have some, like, legitimate excuse to stand there with a sign that says, No more communism. You know, another thing I was thinking, too, is not to to place hate, but... And not to label people, because I don't like labeling people. But those people that finger you... They give you the middle finger, you know, whatever. Those people, I feel like they're waving the communists of Canada flag. That's that's how I feel. I'm not like labeling those people, those that, that you know, they're communists. I just feel like every time they finger me, they're just waving that yellow communist of Canada flag. And it hurts. But you just you just got to smile and, and move on and move past it. I'm a juggalo, so I, I've done it all my life. Been discriminated all my life. I've been that weird person all my life. I'm used to it. So being in a, in a fringe minority, a grassroots, grassroots, go look that up if you don't understand what that means. Meaning that we all have a unified, a, a one single common goal, and that's anti-mandates. Not anti-vax, not pro-vax, not anything, but anti-mandates. That's, that's our one and only goal. So when I saw these people, and they're all, you know, going there, I had to be part of it, because I believed and everything that they stood for. Pro-choice, anti-mandate, bodily autonomy, um, the end of the pandemic, no more masks, no more mandates, 
Not saying that masks are bad, like, I'm just saying, like, we don't need it anymore. We're done. We can move on with our lives. We're better than, we're, we're, we know the signs, we know how to wash our hands. Let's move on with our lives. Let's get our businesses back in order. Let's get our community back in order. Let's get our businesses back. Like how many businesses we've lost. How many loved ones and family members have people lost. And, and we need to mourn and celebrate and, and celebrate our life and unity and create a, a freedom, a new freedom week. Because Canada Day is coming up and uh, Canada Day stands for freedom. And we're not free right now. We are locked down. Anyways, that's it for today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip the camera around and I'm gonna play with the gimbal that I got. Have some, have a good day. Enjoy this nice day for a walk. Peace, love, liberty, freedom, and liberty.